Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, name a city, Todd, and I'll give you the info. What do you want? Let's go. I always start with Richardson. Okay, That's where Richardson. I'm, I'm going to give you data. This is called the absorption rate. This is essentially if no new houses came on the market, this is how many homes are currently active for sale that would last before we ran out. So this is how long the homes that are for sale would last before we ran out of homes in a city if no new homes came on the market. Okay, I'm gonna give you numbers from three to three, three to four hundred, four to five, and five to six. We'll do that for all the cities. Two point eight months, two point one months, two point four months. Okay, so let's stop for one second. In the in the core pricing in Richardson, three hundred thousand up to six hundred thousand. Yep. We basically have two and a half months. Two two to two and a half months in those areas. Okay. Historically speaking, what does that mean? Well, if you look back just three months ago, we had about 0.2 months, 0.3 months. So essentially we were saying we have about a week, we have about a week's worth of inventory. Mm -hmm. Um, Historically speaking, if you were to look at kind of big numbers overall, anywhere from zero to three months worth of inventory is gonna be quote your seller's market three to six months-ish, three to five months, four to six, will be a neutral market. And anything above that is gonna be more of a buyer's market because of the amount of inventory that there is there. But if you just look this year, we began this year and really for the first three or four months of this year, remained consistently across the board in almost all of these cities, right around that 0.2, 0.3, 0.4. Yeah, so for historical reference, uh, if you talk to an economist or a forecaster, they typically say four to six months is a stable market. Meaning if we have four to six months of housing inventory, number houses that people could buy, buyers give, sellers give, there's a give and take. People work with each other to get deals done. If you need to buy and sell, you tend to be really confident you can get both of those things done, right? Now, if we have below four months of housing inventory, we call that a seller's market. In that scenario, you just kind of expect sellers have more leverage, right? It's gonna be easier to sell, harder to buy. When you have 0.2 months, that's when we saw 50 people going and putting offers on houses for $100,000 over because they were so desperate because in an entire city such as Richardson, there may have been four homes for sale. In that price point, right. And there might've been 40 buyers. Right. So that was the most extreme seller's market DFW seen in many lifetimes. Now, on the flip side, it's been since 2008 and nine that we've seen a true buyer's market. That would be um, six, like seven, six or more months of housing inventory, meaning there's just tons of houses for sale, very few people buying them, buyers have all the leverage and sellers are really, really nervous, right? We haven't seen that in a long time. We're definitely not there. We're still in a seller's market, but it has moved a lot. Why don't we check out Frisco? Happened to have Frisco in front of me, Todd. How about so that? So good at this. Here we go. Three to four, we're going to go 0.9. So that's and, and still that's, dramatic, but it's up. It, and honestly, there's just not that many houses right. at that Frisco price point. Frisco doesn't have a lot of home sub four. Four to, four to five, you're at two, exactly. Five to six, you're at 2.1. And then really from there on up, it's across the board, 1.8, 2.3, 1.9. Okay, so let's just say Frisco's still two months or less inventory, but generally right around two months. Yeah, we average and it, it was out around, about two. It was around half of one month uh, to one month for the last, you know, most of the last several years. Frisco was one of the most extreme markets for anything under $500,000, because I remember I kept on looking it up. There was at times under 500,000 handful of houses in Frisco, like eight houses. Yep. So to, to, but to, to do the comparison <clears throat> in many of those areas, the inventory is about four times what it was. We went from like two weeks to eight weeks, you know, 0.5 to two months of inventory. And so the, the, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep sharing different markets, but the message I want to get across is this is good news. How about Fort Worth? Fort Worth. This one's going to go. surprise people. Here we go. Uh, three to four, 2.9. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Three to four, 4.5. Four to five, 4.9. Ready for it? Yep. Five to six, 
7.7, .7, and it keeps going from there. 9.3, 7.5, 10.2. Okay, let me make a point about- when Even in the even in like <laughs> two to three, it's at 2.9. This is a lot of numbers and a lot of data. So you're listening to Texas Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. We got a full crew today. We're talking about local market data and what has changed just in the last few months. Basically, uh, what I wanna warn people about is anytime you look at data for an area as large as Fort Worth or an area as large as Dallas, or by any means, all of DFW lumped together, that data is gonna be unreliable. It doesn't mean it's useless, but it's gonna be a lot less reliable. Real estate is local, I'd say hyper-local. So the more narrow you get, the more reliable you get. So Fort Worth is gonna include every part of Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the cheapest areas, the most expensive areas, the newest areas, the oldest areas, the safest, the, the less safe, it's gonna include all of that. So those that data is gonna be slightly less uh, reliable. But what that's telling you is that broadly averaged Fort Worth is creeping into a stable market. Well, let me just give you kind of the two, the two price points where, that has the most homes for sale is three to four and four to five. So three right. to $500,000. And you're at four to 4.5 4. and 4.9. Yeah. So you're at four to five months of inventory, which is firmly in the stable market category. Now let's be clear. Stable is the right word for that, right? Yeah. It's not flat. Flat is not the right word for that. Stable is means buyers buyers want to buy and sellers want to sell and mm -hmm. they work together. And a seller might say, yeah, I'll fix that if you'll pay that price. And the buyer might say, well, you know, I'll pay this price if you'll leave that. And they're, they're working together. This is actually the ideal yeah. market. Now, I don't think that's going to stay that way, but that's what's happening in Fort Worth. Let's get, what do you got, Wiley? I got Wiley, yep. Wiley, it's kind of Wiley, Saxy, Murphy. It's yeah, I like, that. We, we generally do the data for those together. Um, really across the board there, you're looking from 300 up, you got 1.9 months, 1.6, 1.4. And then um, even in that six to seven range is uh, it's actually the second most homes uh, for sale in that price point is 3.5. Okay, for the for the midpoint, the most popular ranges in Wiley, Saxy, Murphy, you're looking at one and a half to two months of housing inventory, which by the way, is still very clearly a seller's market. It, you know, if you do, if you were to take the spectrum of seller's market, zero to four months, it's still on the extreme side, but it's nearing the midpoint. So very much a seller's market. Uh, we know that market very, very well. Uh, that market still feels pretty intense, but certainly no, not nowhere near as intense as it was a little while ago. Let's do one more you pick. Uh, okay, let's go with, uh, I'll just I'll just give you the rest of them. Plano is firmly entrenched give, in that give me, kind of- Give me 300 to 400 in, all, in any place you want. Yeah, so Plano, you've got uh, 1.2, McKinney, uh, you're looking at 1.5, but the most popular price points in McKinney is between five and seven, that's at two right. and 2.1. Um, Dallas as a whole, again, massive Dangerous. market, but you are looking at uh, two and a half to three and a half. Uh, and then Allen is uh, anywhere from one to one and a half. Okay, that's, that's a lot of that's, numbers. That's the rest of them. <laughs> that, that's a lot of numbers. So so for, for There's anyone- There's a lot of people geeking out on all those numbers right There's now. a few people geeking out. There's probably some people that change the channel, but don't stay right here with us on WBAP. You're listening to Texas Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. And what we are trying to do right now is to give you a true pure data analysis of what's happening in the market. No spin, no, no agenda, you know, no- clickbait headlines, what's happening in the market, if you were to look at the stock market, Ian and Mason, and you were to look at, at a glance, let's ask, let's ask producer Mason this question. If you were trying to get an gauge of where the stock market is today, what's the one thing you would check? Like what's happening in the market today? Where, what's one thing you could look at that would give you a pretty good read on the whole market? Man, I well, most people would check the Dow Jones Industrial Average okay. or the S&P 5, right? Like they would say, that's kind of an umbrella observation of the whole market, right? right? right. The top 500 stocks or the top <laughs> 1,000 or whatever. Um, my point is the absorption rate or the amount of inventory is that one piece of data that's a little bit oversimplified, but it's the one number that could give you a read on the whole market. Right. So if you were to say Richardson, Texas, what's the in, what's housing inventory look like? Oh, 1.8 months. OK, it's a seller's market. I can immediately boom, 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 get that read. That's why we're sharing this data with our listeners, our neighbors, our friends, our clients is so unadulterated without opinion. That's the math. 
then we can start to say, well, why is that happening? Well, interest rates went up, buyers backed away, sellers freaked out that they were missing their opportunity. Those are some of the assumptions. Those are some of the educated guesses, inferences as to what's happening. But that is what's happening right now. We are still in a seller's market in almost every area of DFW. Fort Worth and a few others, broadly speaking, are creeping into a more of a stable market. But no matter where you are, with almost zero exceptions, we are less extreme of a seller's market than we once were, which means sellers can still get phenomenal deals, but buyers have a little bit more breathing room when they're buying. And we're seeing buyers win bigger than we've seen them win in years on our team. And in January, February time, if we'd have said that to people, no way would anybody have believed us. And yep. people would have grabbed that and snatched it and ran off with it. If we yep. said, hey, you're gonna have over two months worth of inventory, Mr. Buyer or Mrs. Yep. Buyer, in, uh, in a couple months from now, do you want to wait? Nobody would have believed yeah. that. If you are a home buyer right now, listen up, lean in, turn up the volume. If you are a home buyer right now, you should call our office or the office of the agent you have a long track record of trust and expertise with, and you should get out there and get a home. Now, if you're not financially prepared, if your family's not ready, then don't do that. I mean, it's, it, it, don't let the market determine your major life decisions. But if you and your family and your finances are ready to buy a home, you're going to have a really great opportunity for the next 30 to 60 days. The sooner, the better, in my opinion, because home values are still going up. And I don't anticipate rates are going to come down much, if any, lower between now and the end of the year. Um, there's a high likelihood they're going to go up at least one more time before the end of the year. Now, here's the deal. Right now, you can buy at very reasonable rates, higher than they were, but still reasonable. You can you have many, many more homes to choose from than buyers have for years now. You have sellers who are a little nervous and they're more willing to be negotiable. You're up against fewer offers. You have more flexibility to get in and out of homes. You might even be able to like see a home and go have a cup of coffee and think for five seconds before you have to make an offer. Doesn't mean you can be lazy, but if you are a buyer right now, you've got a great opportunity. Back to school has created some lower activity in the market. It always does. Uh, you have a bigger opportunity. And then when we come out of back to school and head into the true fall market, that's when historically the seasonality plays in and sellers go shoot we missed the spring and summer. I believe this year, sellers are going to, uninformed sellers, let me be clear, poorly informed sellers are going to say, shoot, I missed spring, I missed summer, I missed low interest rates, and I missed the good market. That's what they're going to think. They'll be they'll, th That information is not perfect, but they're going to think, uh-oh, the ride is over and I missed it. So I think we're going to see continued inventory through the fall, and we're going to see continued less than before buyer demand. So as a buyer, you've got a really great opportunity right now, but home values are still rising. So the longer you wait, the more you pay anyway. Rates are supposed to go up. It's the, the, everyone expects the Federal Reserve to raise the Fed rate, the bank rate, and mortgage rates to trickle up again. So the longer you wait, the higher price you get to pay and the higher rate you get to pay if you're borrowing. If you're a cash buyer, congratulations. This has gone really well for you. Uh, if you're a mortgage buyer, then rates are still very fair. They're not as they're not as nice as they were, but they're still fair. They've come back down a bit, and you have a really great buying season for the next 60 days or so. But do not wait. If you, your family, and your finances are ready, call our office right now, 214-310-0008. Or you can just text 214-310-0008. You could say, I'd like to set up an appointment. I'd like to talk to an agent. I'd like to put together a plan. When can we meet? Whatever you want to do. 214-310-0008. Or you can go online to toddtremontiteam.com. Call any phone number, text any phone number, click any button, fill out any form, and we will get you connected with the right full-time, world-class, dedicated expert that I've trained myself and, and handpicked. We hire very, very few. And I will have we'll have those people uh, connect with you and set up a free strategy session. They'll spend 30 minutes to an hour preparing for it. Then they'll spend 30 minutes to an hour together with you in the office, on Zoom, or even on the phone, whatever's best for you. ToddTremontiTeam.com or 214-310-0008.